guys, Brandon with WhiskeyRiverTrading.com. So we're here with Nicole, who many of you may uh, recognize from running our customer service. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have emailed back and forth now that she's been working here. So Nicole asked to have us give her a run through on how to hang an ax and she knows her stuff and the fundamentals of it and our product line and she's picking that up really fast to help you guys pick out the correct handle for the head and wedge selection and different products. But we figured hands-on, knowing how to hang an ax and uh, kind of the tips and tricks so that she can help out you guys just like all of us do. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I am Nicole. <laughs> I talked over her during the uh, intro so she didn't get to actually introduce herself because that's how it works, I guess. So, yeah, let's go. Uh, so what we've got here is a draw knife. This is a German made draw knife that I picked up a couple years ago. And we've got a 36 inch hickory handle, one of our premium line ones. A pile of wedges so that we can pick out the favorite wedge that we like to contrast to the handle. And a vintage craftsman head. I think this is a four pound. It's a full size head. It's pretty wedgy. So it's going to make a great splitter on a 36 inch handle. We've got our Japanese pull saw. If you guys don't have one of these, pick one up. This one's from Harbor Freight. It's like 10 bucks. Uh, you guys can buy like a silky fancy one if you like it, but I like the cheap one because I end up losing it a lot. And then our vice guard. This is vice guard that we sell on the website. It's pretty cheap to pick up and it goes inside your vice like this and it protects as the jaws close on the wood or the steel. It doesn't leave marring from the, from the jaws because you don't want that. So prior to this video or previous to this video, I went ahead and just touched up this draw knife with one of our Arctic Fox pucks. This is a dual grit stone. It is uh, 220 grit and 400, and you can use it dry or you can soak it in water or use oil. So. Yeah, so we're gonna get started and I'm just gonna teach her and any questions that you have during it. This is kind of just like a practice for her and a practice for me on how to teach this this uh, little tutorial. So we have a full-sized axe handle and you learned that they were tapered recently mm -hmm. uh, when we got questions about that. So an easy way, it gets wider at the shoulder, an easy way to check if it is going to fit the hand, the head, uh, which I did at the office earlier today, um, is does it start to slip in and does it have gaps at the front and the back? And if it does have gaps in the front and the back, does it taper wider so that you can, you know, as it as it goes down, it's gonna it's gonna widen out. So right now, this is a pretty long handle. But right now, it only goes on, you know, quarter inch, not much. So we can see that it's actually on the outsides like this. It's not clamped on the front or the back because it can tip. Mm -hmm. so it's being held here. So first, we're gonna remove the material from that the from the from the sides, and that's pretty much what this game is. Is like head on, figure out how it's like not working, mm -hmm. pull it off. And then once we get it further and further on, it's gonna be harder and harder to get the head off. So um, we'll get to play that game uh, here in a little bit. So handle in here, and we can clamp this like any way that we want. Mm -hmm. And actually the closer to the price, the better. Uh, just got done explaining to you the way that you can flip the draw knife back and forth. So I'm gonna actually let you draw knife this. Yeah. You can knock yourself out. Just don't go below this uh, this shoulder mark because okay. you won't want to remove any material from there. Would you recommend doing like the like a thicker section first or? Like yeah, you can take some pretty decent material there. Never use one of these. Yeah, that's okay. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah. You can accidentally take a lot. Yep. And that's okay. Uh, on this on this beginning part, you're gonna want to log a bunch of way. Here you go. Ow. Let's Let's move that, that over. <laughs> <laughs> and then on this uh, 
just so you took a slice here and yeah. you want to I forgot to mention this as you um, you want to do it in facets so here here okay here right. and pretend like this is pretty flat right now but you right. know pretend like this is a, a rounded piece right. mm -hmm. yeah so that you're so, not like yeah, yeah instead of just shape. gouging it in one spot yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can flip it you can flip your draw knife yeah. and then go ahead and um, slowly pick it back Start, uh, I'm not gonna put my finger in there, but yeah. start uh, here and just gouge in there. Oh, like, I see. Slowly work your way back yeah, and then you'll, yeah. and you'll take that cut away. You could actually lift it up as well. Yeah, you're good. I'd rather take like less than two months. Yep, yep, yeah, for sure. There you go, yeah. There we go. That works. Perfect. So let's uh, let's go ahead and that yeah, get that top little corner yeah, off. Yeah. Flip your uh, flip your jaw knife and you just knock that gouge right off. Yeah. Can we get right, it? Right here. Oh, I see. Yeah. Sweet. Now if we go ahead and flip the handle, so we can see how it's obviously Thinner. a little bit bigger mm -hmm. on one side. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the nice thing about having the curve cut straight is that's your center line, mm -hmm. so you can kind of get an eyeball of how it is. So this has got a knot in it, but it's not really a knot. It's kind of like a, a bark abrasion. That's why we're using this handle. Mm -hmm. uh, so that should that should draw a knife off. Okay. All right. This side's a little harder than Yep. Uh, your draw knife. This way? Yeah, just like, use a different part of the pen. Oh, I see. I feel like I'm gonna... Big guy. There you go. Good. They're kind of hard. I think the reject handle to use and it is making it hard for us. <laughs> it makes sense that the bar is tougher. Yeah, it's like it's bend of the elements. Right. Sharper because mm -hmm. then in that case, it's definitely helpful to see how you're using it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, especially at this part of the process, you don't have to worry about taking too much away. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you really gouged it, but yeah, once you get down to, towards the end, you can in the final fitment, you could definitely be like, oh. Snap, I just took away <laughs> way too much wood.
we got Farrier's Rasp too that I forgot to mention. It's a crucial tool for this process. Also, this is a Farrier's Rasp for shoeing horses. Uh, your palm, you see how the top there is smooth. It doesn't have, that's for your palm to go. And you can, you're, you're pushing this. Um, the teeth only cut in one direction. So you can see how they're kind of yeah. this way. So on a push motion. And then there's a smaller tooth on this direction. So. <laughs> That feels horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> Sorry. So, like, you can remove a lot of. Seeing that this is for horseshoes, it's a lot harder. Horseshoes material is a lot harder than wood, so right. it chews through wood um, like it's. <laughs> so in this case, we got this little bit of a knot or bark abrasion. It's not even really a knot and that is super hard for the draw knife to get through consistently and uh, as far as, this is how you would accidentally take too much material away. Say you got underneath this and it just yeah. chipped off. So this is, this is a better route to go mm -hmm. on this side and uh, it looks like we're getting uh, down there. So test it out. Yeah, let's, let's test it out and see how the head looks. All right. So it goes on a little bit further, not much further. And then you can kind of look here in the center. Okay. And you can see, okay, what's where's it touching? Okay. And you can see how the side that I just worked on is definitely shaped further down than the mm -hmm. first side. The first side. It's a little flatter. Yeah. It so, seems like it's touching the front. Yep. Yeah, exactly. The front and the back. So the best bet on a handle like this is you could you could take off the front, but then that hand that head's gonna then be set back in the handle. So instead, okay. you want it to be parallel on the front. You don't want to take much material away, in my opinion. The internet may have other opinions on this, but <laughs> you could take the shoulder and you could, like you could hang a really small head on this and you just make this shoulder more pronounced. So we're gonna end up taking material off the back and then making it smaller this direction and then it should, should be mm -hmm. further down. We should, we should put a tiny head on a really long sometime. <laughs> Voices of Jake put a, uh, I can't remember, I think it was a double bit on like an eight foot handle of splitting wood <laughs> on TikTok. The, uh, shout out to Voices of Jake, good dude, funny guy. He's a fellow Midwesterner, he's from Minneapolis, so, nice. or maybe not Minneapolis, Minnesota, at least. Um, I know he hangs out in Minneapolis, so. Here you go, I'll let you draw a knife off the okay. back here. And I would say try to take a quarter inch okay. off and kind of taper it Take so that way you can come Excuse me, puppy dog. Okay. You can come all the way back here. Yeah, I was working my way. Yep. Working, my, working my way yep. downtown. Yeah, which is a good point actually to make is that you're you're trying to do it in little bursts, not not whole hogging whole chunks off of it. You know, you'll see on Instagram guys that are, you know, taking huge, huge chunks of wood away in one draw, but they have thousands and thousands of axes underneath their belt of, of hanging. So you want to baby steps, especially when you're learning. Uh, a little further back? Uh, let's, 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 let's see how that fits. Okay. Um, And there's a top and a bottom, obviously. Uh, but I didn't mention is the bottom is smaller than the top. Okay. So when you measure for an axe handle to fit, you're measuring. That's why you're measuring oh, the right. bottom and that's handle. For, that's for the wedge to. Like, uh, yep. The yeah. Section. Exactly. Yeah. So the wedge flares out. Um, the where. Yeah. It, it it gives space for it to move uh, in the in the top. So yeah, we're getting further on. Um, I would say we're probably gonna have to take some off the side. Side. So, I see. Yep. Okay. And that should, as you're seeing here, it's hanging crooked like this. Right. The handle. And that's it's just because, more curved on yeah, that side. Yep. Yeah. So you can go ahead and. Mm -hmm.
trying to get yeah. under it. Yeah, you're seeing if you rotate that, you can find like a sweet spot. Yeah, right. Like where I want it to be. Tip the blade just a touch flatter when you're cutting, and it should. Okay. Uh, flatter? Yeah. And a little bit towards the ground, right there almost. It should be. There's only like a couple degree sweet spot in there, but it's yeah. once you get it, it's like okay, this is where I need to hold it. Ah. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> is it flatter? We it getting... is flatter. Yeah. Okay. So it looks about equal to the other side. Let's try it. Actually, let's take that rasp and just knock down this yeah. top part. It's it's. Kind of got a um, shelf there. Finer section? Uh, you can use whatever section uh, that you feel best when you're using it. Just okay. go ahead and try it out. I'm just taking these little like notches out. Yeah, and and you can whole hog a lot of material away with this. So you're you're um, right here. It tapers off, kind of like a little shelf. Mm -hmm. So you're taking this high spot down. Okay. Are you seeing that from your angle? Uh, I'm just seeing. I was just watching you draw knife away, oh, and you were you were starting here. So now you can yeah, um, you see can see on the actually. other side mm -hmm. where I I came all the way back to here with that rasp. Yeah, so. I see that. Yep. Yeah. See how much material it takes away. It's like mm -hmm. honestly. It's like a, it's like a palm sander, you know, mm -hmm. like you can, a lot of wood. Okay. Wait. So we're halfway through the eye now. Okay. You know, because we're we're getting this curve uh, comes down to like it's gonna. Well, it depends on how far you want to hit set the hand head down. You can come all the way down to the mm -hmm. shoulder. You can also hang it high. Some guys like to hang them high up on the shoulder so then way if the head lo loosens, you can pull the head off, refit it, and then re you can just keep the handle. But if you hang it all the way down here and then the head loosens. You can't bring yeah, it any can't further like down. You can't tighten it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like hanging them a little bit higher and leaving like an inch above the shoulder okay. as far as where the head sits. Um, Can I look down the down the eye again? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's hitting on the on the corner corners. Passes. Yeah. 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 It looks like right now. All right. So and you can probably do that with the rasp, honestly. Yeah. You can pull your facets off. Yeah. Um, so ch chunks out. Yeah. Once it gets past here, we're gonna actually like hit it and mm -hmm. set it uh, to try to um, 
then the head will start showing us where it's rubbing. Yeah. Uh, you'll see marks on it, but you can see here. So you're just looking in the top of the eye for light, really. What's coming through, where is it, where is it hitting, and all that. And be sure that you don't pull too much off of this part. That part? This part we're getting small on. So yeah, right, so I'm just taking the corners. No, you're okay. And you can use a, you can use the rasp when you want to like be a little bit more, or flip your. Yeah. And one thing a lot of people don't realize is that this can look however it looks underneath the head, the head, the head's covering up. So if you're, if you've got like some draw knife marks or whatever, it's getting covered up by the head, so. As long as it doesn't affect the equipment, um, look however it is. I would pull your rasp out and just take a hand section. And just as long as you stay above that shoulder. <laughs> too much. Oh, I see. Is it? There you go. <laughs> right, like did I pull too much right there? Uh, nope. Yeah, almost. Almost. Uh, if you want to pull this. Out. of the handle on the ground. You can go harder than that. There you go. Okay, just slide the right down. Yeah. That's awesome. So we're getting real close to um, getting fit. So pick it up and look from the bottom. And you can see it's curling in the front. And I mean, okay. it's, it's up to us on how far we want to hang this down. I would go, we're going to probably be best if we go another half inch down. And that will okay. give us more material on the top of the eye to fill up because uh, it's tapered. So. Right. Does this mean I want to take a little bit off of the front? Uh, you're going to end up taking a little bit off the front, but the off, the off the back will we'll, uh, help. Okay, uh, I see. Yep. So it's just like right there. Yep. Okay. So uh, just <laughs> tap this. Uh, pick up the other way. That. This way. And then just hit it. What? Yep. There you go. That's good. And then you should be able. To, this is not super sharp. This is, we left this little for this, so you can just. Can't get that. <laughs> there yeah. So if it's coming off the front. You know, if, if the handle's digging in in the front, you pull off the back, and then when it sets down, you're obviously going to have some curling. Up. You should have some curling around um, the outside. Um, but you can see where it's rubbing here on the back. Right? So it's, it's being pushed. Uh, it's being pinched, yeah. And obviously this is curling because it's thin versus it's not going to curl in the back. Mm -hmm. It's thick. So, just thick yep, I, would, I would just go ahead and knock this off just a little bit, just to keep that curl from accidentally yeah. walking its way down the handle and then come into the back and okay. we'll go from there. Should I use, wait, what is this called again? Uh, that is called a rasp. Rasp. Should I use a rasp? Yeah, you can actually, I, I would say the, the fine side of the rasp. Yeah. The top there. And so you can see where the handle was. 
does it. Made a mark. Less is more on this, I think. Yeah, right, like right along here. Yeah, just making this a little thinner. <laughs> down this and see if one's side higher or lower. Mm. I think this side's a little higher. <laughs> Can't really tell yeah, we can throw the head on and the head's yeah. going to tell us. Do that one more time. Cool. <laughs> Let's put it on backwards. <laughs> Yeah, which is good. Yep, that okay. means it's tight, right? Uh, and then, is there any gaps like on the sides, or we have? Um, this one right there. Yeah, there's a little bit of gap. One which, there. Yeah, which may change. So this side is pretty flat. Like I feel like that side's pretty good. Mm -hmm. So I'll just take out like the middle section, right? Like just right there. Just a touch, and then we can pull it off, and it should it should tell us like where it was rubbing. Okay. Um, Yep. Okay, okay, so let's just look at the handle here and just to see where it was rubbing. So we got there and then flip it. Yeah, and here. Right this there. was the flatter side. Yeah, this is yeah. the flatter side. So, so I'll probably take it on this side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, it's just a little bit. <laughs> Is that like a good spot for it to be? Uh, it is going to come down just a little bit further, but I... Uh, Should I take it off a little bit right there? Yeah, just a touch. <laughs> Um, yeah, go, yeah, yeah bring the bottom in, yep. I'll flip it for you. Okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> So this head does have a little bit of a taper in the bottom, which is helping us for this. Uh, if, if it was inside there, if it was a straight 90, it would be digging in a lot harder. Yeah. For some reason this head, either someone's rehung it and they've chamfered that so that it doesn't, mm -hmm. or manufa and, like the manufacturer, um, that's how they forged it. So okay. if we're going to look at this once, it's going to be interesting to see how it does hang. Um, because it is a little bit crooked in the top here. Oh yeah, I see that. Uh, which I'm not sure exactly how to correct that uh, much. It's kind of one of those things that when you, you get it hung and it's like, um, 
you get it hung and, and then you're like, oh wow, that's really, really off. Um, okay. At this point, it's off, but I would say let's pull some off the bottom here to get it to, for the head to be able to hopefully tip back, because right now it's coming down at a little bit of an angle. Wouldn't that mean though that like, if it's closer on the top, Wouldn't it mean that it's thicker down here on this side? Then that's what would be pushing it that way? Oh, it's being tipped this way. Oh, you're, you're referring to the head. Yeah, the head. Yeah, the okay. Head. So the head's being tipped this way. So that means so we have to more on, on the side. side on the bottom. Yeah. So if we pull a little bit off, it should allow the bottom of this head so to come in. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then. Um, and then you should be able to. Do you remember what side it was? Yeah, it was that side. Yeah. That side. All right. It, it, but it is. We see the improvements. So yeah, we're it's making. Getting, <laughs> getting better. This is what's called chasing a hang. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> you're like trying to improve it that last little bit, and it can be super frustrating to try to get it. And I mean, if you come too far down, then next thing you know, it's like jumping. Now you start to mm -hmm. start over. <laughs> That's tilting forward still. Uh, right? Well, the head tips. Oh. The head should tip a little bit forward. It's called yeah, it's called a closed hang. So okay. you're gonna want the head to tip forward a little bit. Otherwise, it's you know pointed back. Uh, but good good eye on that. Okay. I would take the rasp and just knock all that. Just very very gently. Lots of 
on and off, on and off, on and off. Hit me. Okay. Let's see, so it's going a little bit that way. Um, it's to, it's, we're, we're aligning the blade. Oh, the with the blade. Yeah. See how the blade is tipped. Which can is straighten like out once we wedge. Or the, the uh, it's it's in the. I don't know. I'm I'm almost like saying I, it's hard to say. It's hard to say when we get a wedge in there. Well, if it'll straighten itself out or mm -hmm. if it's going to continue to kind of be cocked to the side. wedge this, mm -hmm. it's going to spread out. It's going to spread out further on this side than this side. Right. Will that, that will that mean that it's going to tip mm -hmm. the handle to the top of the head this way? Because right. this side is going to hit first, pushing this this mm -hmm. way, and in that case, it would straighten it out. Right? Yeah, because I think this side is a little bit thicker on the top section. Uh -huh. it's closer. And so we have we have a couple options. I mean, we can we can wedge it. See what happens. See what happens. <laughs> uh, you know, it's this we're building this splitting axe. So right. as far as it being a little bit off, it is what it is. Um, I have plenty of working axes that are like you know not straight, <laughs> but I still use the heck out of them. So um, yeah. So I'll pull the head off there. Uh, well, no. Uh, we can leave the head on. Yeah. Yep. So we're gonna put this in the vise and we're going to chop off so that we only have about a quarter, uh, about a half an inch of both. Okay. This is too much uh, material taken out to the top. So um, we can do that with the head in the vise because then we don't have to mark it. Let's go to town with it. So the pole saw is good for that. You can see that this has two different styles of teeth in it. So a thin and a less aggressive and less aggressive. And this only works on the full stroke. Okay. It doesn't quite come to push, so you, you can let it glide back, but you don't want to have to do it. Yeah, it's just a So it's terrible. And then, just, and then once you get it going, you, you just want to go to the... Mark it out. Yeah, it's already marked on there. So you can just... And make sure that when you... Because this is a super... Um, like the the advantage you you have with a pull saw um, versus like a coping saw, a coping saw can go off really quickly mm -hmm. and you can like cut at an angle. If you start your cut with one of these saws straight and you get a half an inch in straight, the blade is going to help guide it straight. Right. So uh, just keep your saw straight at the beginning. Which side are you uh, I would I would use the, the thin one to, until you get it straight and then you can chew it away. It's pretty quick. <laughs> So we, what we did there was just remove material because if you wedged it, the wedge would start binding up here, and we want it oh, to bind inside the head. Right. We want it to. Work. We'll end up like cutting out. Yeah. Here, right? Yeah. I usually like recommend a quarter. So mm -hmm. we got a half inch out right now. 
And the wedge obviously isn't going to go this way. Yeah. So we're going to have uh, a decent amount of material. Mm -hmm. So wedges, uh, I brought all the varieties from the office. We've got walnut, uh, testing me here, um, cherry, mahogany, no, canary, mahogany, <laughs> purple heart, white oak, and then and this cherry. is cherry. Uh, and these are double bit wedges. We sell single bit, or we sell hatchet, single bit, and double bit. And if you're hanging hatchets with a double bit, it would be kind of a waste. However, they're only uh, 10 cents more than a single bit to have a double bit. Um, you've got a bunch of different, you've got a bunch of extra material there. You can see here that you've got about three eighths of an inch before, uh, I don't know if you can come in this way, uh, you know, before, you got three eighths of an inch extra to trim that wedge. So okay. pick out which one you want, you want to use. And what does white oak look like on its... This is that one that's got the stripes. Yeah, so this is I a, saw like the green and I was like, ooh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, white oak's kind of got a really cool end grain uh, character, so mm -hmm. it's, it's a pretty cool. wedge. This is a new wedge we offer. What was the other one? Cherry yeah. is the other one. So in our wedge video, uh, which Dalton will put in the description, talking about our wedges, uh, you can see uh, our variety of wedges, however, we do not have the cherry and the white oak in there. Because people have been asking. Uh, so yeah, when we go ahead, let me find a. We got a pen here. So best way to do it, yeah, line it up to the back of the handle or the back of the eye, and then you just mark the front here, and then okay. find yourself a straight edge. You can use like another wedge here, and you can mark this. And that's your cut line for the full saw. Okay. Right with this guy? Yep. And you got a line to follow. Helpful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got your wedge cut. Now this is roughly the same size as our single bit wedge. However, they're a little bit taller, so you've got a lot more to use. Uh, if you're hanging a full size axe, obviously it's a little bit taller in the eye, so you want that wedge to go further down. If you hold this up to this, you know you want this wedge to come down to about three quarters of an inch into the head. You want it as far down as you can, or a lot of people say uh, two thirds of the way. Into the into the head, so you can see that it'll it's still going to be sticking out above the top of this handle a little bit. Um, so kind of just slide it in here and just look. 
Okay, that's that's gonna fit. <laughs> great. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> uh, this is when it gets. Uh, this is when. This is like the final step. Yeah. There's no going back once this is wedged. If you, if you wedge it, um, and it's not hung right, you're gonna cut the handle off and start over. Um, and it's a good thing we make handles. So, <laughs> uh, but a lot of people uh, like to use wood glue on these. You know, in all reality, if you set this right, you're not gonna like glue is not going to be the thing that's going to keep this axe together if it's not set right. Um, some people oil wedges so that they can drive them in harder, but at the end of the day, it's all about how this wedge seats in there. And uh, we say uh, like beat it like it owes you money because you got to really wail on it. So one thing to mention, we did tap this handle on the ground like this, but I like to flip it over and just give it a couple blows on the top here with a with a mallet. And when you hit the handle down, Pretty physics tell, tells us that it's going to bring it up. So, it's heavier. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you do this. This is right. what this is why it's called hanging axe. Right. This is like you're hanging axe and you hit the bottom of it. Um, if you bring your hand a little bit closer to it, <laughs> otherwise you're going to hit something. Right. Yeah. And How hard? Lower your hand. And then just uh, as hard as you can hit it, it like. Right. That's it. That's two hits. Yeah. So and now you can see that it maybe just had this final little bit. It's very crucial that we don't have a shelf. Here, where it like curled all around and it, like scores the handle, and that's called a ninja shelf, and that's a uh, super bad hit. That's where it would lead to breaking uh, on any axe. A lot of people hang and they, they like cheat. We've tapered this in with that rasp, so it doesn't happen, but if you didn't, you would set that down. So don't cheat, just uh, <laughs> do it right. So I'm gonna get your axe less. So now we've got wedge in here, and especially with long stuff like this, uh, I mean, if you're working with a hatchet, you can put it on the table. But on long stuff like this, you've got wedge in, get against the ground. Uh, this is also how it would work inside of a press. So you can have a press pushing down on a, on a table, and you can just bottle jacket. But in this case, we're going to use the mallet. And so you can hold this and slowly tap, like baby taps, and that wedge is gonna slowly go in.
change tune a little bit here. Let me see this one. We're not really closing that gap up like I'd like, you know? And I think that's because we removed a little bit too much of the wall on the top, yeah. Drive that in any further. That's tells your rope. Alright. So uh, still, you know, one thing that could happen when you're driving that wedge in if you didn't have it on the ground and you were like holding it like this, hit the handle and the head comes up. Uh -huh. The opposite of what you're hanging at. And so I like to check to make sure that the head didn't come off of the handle at all. And it didn't. So now we're at the point where we can it off and even though it looks like disgusting on top here where it's chipped and shredded down you're never going to see that because all this is just going to cut off mm -hmm. so it, it always looks ugly sometimes they crack with the crust yeah but they because the this is so compressed there's so much pressure here that um that it's impossible for that wedge that crack really to travel down inside that wedge mm -hmm. and it's being held together so uh, now we can just pull the saw off the wedge. And uh, you can make it as ha hang it as high as you want. This is kind of uh, freedom of, you know, however you want to do it. Some people cut these flush. I don't usually cut it flush. I like to have this flare out in the top. It's similar to how, like, a uh, the spindle of an arm comes down into the base of a chair, of a handmade chair. You see how when they, when they wedge those, they spread out and it kind of locks that all together. So okay. Chop it off and then we'll right. see how it looks. Let's go back there. Am I using the right side? Yeah. Okay. It works on the mm -hmm. pole, so. Right. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're cutting it at a little bit of an angle here. Mm -hmm. So we can now that we've got like the majority of it off, we can flip this axe over. You can then look from the top. And, yeah. Uh, you can see. Look at that grain character, though. Beautiful. It's pretty. It's actually yeah. really dark. This is white oak, so it's not red oak, but in the contrast of the hickory, it looks. Yeah, it looks really dark. Yeah. It looks like a funky walnut. <laughs> Saw where if you push forward, it doesn't. <laughs> All right. And now, uh, stop 
for a second mm -hmm. and look at uh, the switch actually. I'm gonna hold this and you can kind of see what's happening on the end. Yeah, oh, it's angled out. Yeah. yeah. So you're you're looking square, but you're you have to put. Oop, I just broke it off, which is actually gonna benefit us. In yeah, this, right. Because it, <laughs> this this saw is like I said, it's designed to track. However, you get your first like quarter yeah. inch in, okay. that's how it's gonna track. So you can keep that saw straight up and down, straight, and you can kind of stand back and see it like this and line it up mm -hmm. and get it going again. That's looking better. So go ahead and, and do that. And one thing, uh, you know how the saw tries to bend when you're yeah. pushing it back in. Um, that's a that's from the two teeth binding position which forces people down. down. So okay. this is designed to have your hand come over through your back. If you have your hand forward, then the weight of your hand's pushing it back, and that's the, that's the reason. Just let the saw do the work. More control the further back. You yep. Know. Yep. Just like a hammer. That's a lot easier. Yeah, it's uh, kind of letting the saw do the work on your hands that far back. Feel it too. Pretty square oh, there, and we can we can rasp off the top, okay. like to, to get it kind of flattened, as flat as you want it. Like this is just aesthetic at this point. Or like yeah. this is a very much it's like complete axe. You could have left yeah. it with the wedge in the top out. I know some guys do that, and then they use that axe and um, swing it around. And then when they finally want to, like, okay, this is ready. You know, I'm lightening this handle on this head. Yeah, right. Um, I can. You can then finish it. Test it out first. Yeah. Matthew Justice hangs stuff in, in like a, a way that he uh, he just doesn't put a wedge in it. So like he doesn't wedge it. It's, just, it's like tight enough of a fit that it's not wedged. He goes out and uses it. He doesn't like it. And, and then, like, it in the Who does a lot of things in a traditional way? I don't know if he read that somewhere or if that was something that he just kind of ends up using. I do. I do like that technique, especially if you're not sure if you like the handle. Mm -hmm. you know, that like makes a, sense. Yeah. So I would, I would actually stand over the axe and, um, yeah. Go down. Yeah, you can kind of look down. You can kind of, uh, like your eyes over the axe, and you can kind of look and see how you're.
and then the top. So you're having where inertia has the most force. The forward. The, the mm-hmm. higher on the yeah. handle, the more forward is hitting first and that, that helps split wood versus uh, an open hang, which is more traditional on um, you know smaller stuff. I mean, in, in modern time, even in carving hatches, people like closed hangs because um, it gives them more control and mm-hmm. then they're cutting edges further away yeah. from from their hand. So, Makes sense. yeah. So we've got some gaps in the top here, which this head is chamfered in on the top. So it could just be the optical illusion that there are gaps. Uh, but yeah, that looks great. I'm, I'd am i be confident in swinging this. Cool. It's hung a little crooked, <laughs> but well, honestly not much. If you, if, you look, <laughs> if you look down this blade here uh-huh. and you line it up with the handle, yeah. it's actually not too far off. So if you look here that. and yeah. line it up, you know, that's probably within spec. It's, uh, do you remember the distance of over, there's a force over spec over for every foot. It can be off this many inches if you run a string down this and then compare it to the handle. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, cool. yeah, this is a, it's a great hang. Nice work. So uh, last step is oiling the uh, wedge, which we do as like a, a joke. Uh, because a lot of people, um, we started this as like a parody with Roy Vintage Axe where he like does this dancing thing and like boils the top of the wedge and uh, I made a parody video of it um, and now everybody does it so now that really brings out the contrast to that so if you rub your finger in that it like warms up. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> it was sitting upside down in the van that's why. But this is, our, this is our camp wax. This comes in one and two ounce, one, two ounce, and five ounce tins. It's a wax, uh, boy, bees wax paste. It's got flaxseed oil in it and then some orange uh, essential oils to make it smell nice. And also gives it like that, that uh, orangey color also. So yeah, you just okay. warm it up and then you just rub it on here. You're actually need a decent amount on your finger. Oh, okay. yeah. So previously this has been something that you've needed to heat up, but now we kind of reformulated it so that it's it gets feels good just in your or melts just with your uh, heat of your hand. All right. Yeah. And then just smear it all over there, and then it'll bring out the color of that wedge. Ooh. Should I do the sides too? Sure. Why not? Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that grain character is crazy. It looks like a uh, snake skin almost, <laughs> or alligator skin. You know, it's got that. Yeah, the it's, lines. Yeah, it looks. Uh, cool. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do this handle. I'm gonna see if I can find some sand. Kind of like blue now. <laughs> grand, uh, the grand structure of that handle is kind of that color. Uh, I see.
much softer. So keeping the rasp off the shoulder allows us to, to make sure that there's not so much scoring. Like if you were to drop yeah. that rasp really down, and some handles you have to do that, and it just leaves a bunch of scoring. So it helps with just finishing it and making it look nice and you can kind of control during the whole process. It does. Yeah. This is a really sweet mallet. It's made in Maine. I picked it up at the local ferry supply store. Garland is the company. Garland. Yeah, Gar Garland. Garland in Saco, Maine. It's on, on maybe like a 14 inch handle. Looks like a cinnamon roll. That's a full set. Slightly wrapped and then held together with a screw. Maybe we'll try pairing these on the site. Eventually. So this is a five pound. I can feel five pounds. No, it feels like a pound. Yeah. It feels like maybe a can too. of soup. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe it's number five. Mm. It's a right-handed mallet. It says all right, right-handed mallet. Rawhide. Oh, rawhide. That's it. <laughs> That'd be funny. Left and right hand. You just start putting flying boxes on the inside like that. Okay. Are you looking good? All right, so then this would be just softer. lathering this all over your hands, which is super safe for your hands. Uh, and it's actually, you know, you can use this on your skin as a like a moisturizer. Mm -hmm. So just kind of like lather that. Take a chunk. And uh, the the faster you rub it in the handle, the more it goes in because just because of the fact that you're opening up the pores in the wood. And this wax is awesome for being like a nice thin coat. You know, like nobody likes a super heavily waxed handle, but it gives a nice thin coat. So if you like leave this outside or you're working in the winter and your gloves are wet, um, it's allowing that handle not to just soak in that moisture. I mean, wood's like a sponge, so it's, it can detect any humidity or anything. So this just gives it a nice seal. One thing I like about the camp wax versus lacquer is, is that it, it's not grippy, so it doesn't like grab your hands and create blisters like like lacquer does. Nobody likes a lacquer handle, except the hardware store. <laughs>